it's devastating to come to terms with how colonial relationships have to material and to country. The work is about remembering what was there and paying respects to our ancestors. I'm Megan Cope, I'm a Kwanamooka woman from North Stradbroke Island and I've been commissioned to make this artwork for the Sydney Opera House. Well, I think, you know, when we look at oysters, like, it's such a fascinating, there's such a fascinating material, and there's, like, material politics attached to it, there's also social politics attached to it. You know, once upon a time, oysters were a poor man's food, and everybody, like, this food sustained the working class for, like, generations. When it comes to the work that needs to happen in this country, reconciling with history, including Aboriginal people, in our way forward, you know, you have to deal with the shit, you know, and I think it was really important for people to be engaging with looking at this oyster, like marvelling over it, going, wow, I've never spent this much time with an oyster, look at how beautiful it is. And to share that love with others, to talk through these things, like that for me, um, the process of the material preparation is the work. We've needed 4,000 hours of manual human labour. There's no way that you can automate this process. This is, you could never get this off the shelf at Bunnings. Every day, it's a hive here now. So we've got five people every day. I want this work to have like a working class sentiment. You know, I want it to be inclusive. I want it to embody the things that our people base our fundamental social philosophical framework on. All of those little things I've been trying to integrate in material preparation for this work. Look at them, beautiful. And that again goes back to like our old ways. Like everybody has the right to be creative and to apply like creativity and innovation. Like it's not an exclusive thing for a certain amount of people. Everybody participated in the making of things. This is how we're going to make the midden mound um, that's going to sit at the top podium. And it's, this, this mound is going to be like, it's going to look like it's coming like through the building. And yeah, we've come up with this design to handle the conditions of the opera house. So uh, aluminium, um, stainless steel mesh and um, the methodology is to basically stitch all these shells to the um, to the netting. Five by seven meters. You don't have to, to, to dig very deep to find that there were lime kilns there on that site. And what did they do in lime kilns? They burnt shells to make the lime to build the foundations of the colony. I've come across some pieces of writing that say those that that that, that midden there was a hundred meters long and like 12 meters high and that they just saw it as this ready-made building material there for for their taking. Yeah this work kind of almost is a memorial for a moment to like remember that to think about that loss. Because what happens when they take that away, they, they take away, you know, 40,000 years of family gatherings. Whenever we invite people, we say, oh, are you familiar with the concept of a midden? And more often, the, the answer is no. So it's a wonderful exercise in educating people and actually telling them what a midden was and telling them actually how this, 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 this area was inhabited and how rich it was and important it was. My understanding of it is it's, it's pretty much a circular artwork. So using um, shells that would otherwise have gone into landfill to create an artwork 
um, that also not only speaks to the sustainability but also to the history of this place, to Bagali where we are at, and the middens and um, pretty much sort of reviving what it once was, but it now like sort of in a modern context. Yeah. yeah. How's that flow? <laughs> <laughs> we are scrubbing oyster shells, cleaning them for making Pope's artwork for the 50th um, birthday of the Opera House. Um, and this is the second time we've done a big group from um, Opera House staff just donating a bit of time to clean them up and get them ready for the artwork. You gotta roll up your sleeves and muck in. You know, but that is what art is for Megan. You know, it's not an elitist sort of thing which is trapped inside a museum. Art and culture are living, breathing around us. And that's why this project is um, particularly relevant and particularly important to us. I mean, I guess I just really want people to participate in this, you know, like, and making this midden together so that it creates a bit more of a connection. So we've moved the studio here so that people can access the work um, and participate in the material preparation for the sculptures. Yeah, I don't know, I've been waking up thinking, are you crazy? But the thing is, like, yeah, I guess I am a bit crazy. I think all artists are. But it's also like, you know, it's also about commitment. Like, I really, I've been, you know, like every time I come to this site, I think about that midden and I think about um, what happened to it. And I think about the erasure of, like, Aboriginal architecture. Yeah, it's a huge commitment, but I think it's really important. I want everyone to kind of be aware of that stuff. So that's the magnificence of Megan's work as well, because it looks to the past and it imagines the future. And that's, how, that's what we aim for in our 50th anniversary. And so it was really great working with Megan, working with the shells because of um, my ancestors, they used to work with shells and so to be able to bring both of those together was really special and exciting. And being able to have a uh, cultural artwork where our ancestors used to be is really special, a really special moment for our people. Well, if that's, we've got to start this, that's got to get right that side first. Uh, I'm really, I'm, I'm equally terrified but excited, right? And like today, for instance, is really, really important because now that I've had this time um, with the aunties from La Perouse, like I feel like it's a blessing. Even the practice of welcome to country derives from a ceremonial practice that Aboriginal people have done for thousands of years of being actually welcomed onto neighbouring clans country or neighbouring nations country and it meant that you were respectful to the people of the land, their ancestors and you adhered to their cultural protocol and their cultural laws while on country. In turn that gave you safe passage through country and access to the resources of that country while you were on that country. So it's with obviously my cultural teachings, the bloodline with the bloodlines within me and also I want to acknowledge my aunties, obviously, who are more senior to me on behalf of my Redfern and my La Perouse communities and my families that, um, you know, I welcome this project to country and I welcome us all here today to country. Hi, thanks for Rowena. Um, and I pay my respects to your aunties as well. Um, thanks for having me here and thanks also for yeah, the contribution that we're making together for this project. In lots of ways, the work will be an acknowledgement of country, a way of my people acknowledging your people and what you've lost here because it's going to be at the Sydney Opera House. I'm really excited by the prospect that people will be able to see that site in the way that we see that site. Um, and I'm hoping that there'll be 
I don't know, that it'll stick, it'll be something that they can't unsee and um, finally remember that dual history of that site there. So they kind of, the shells kind of arrange themselves in lots of ways too, eh? We can go forward now, um, they know what it's about and um, you know we agree that it's a, a good idea and a powerful statement and I think that that kind of stuff's really, really, that's success. Now we're at the stage in the project where it's really all of that physical kind of working class labour starts to really connect with the final sculpture. When I look at the Opera House, when I look at the Harbour Bridge, we all know like that they were, those incredible structures were built by regular people, you know. So um, I love that as well in this work, that these extraordinary sculptures are going to be also made by regular people. I kind of love this um, duality that's going to occur though. So it'll have a presence from a distance and you can see it in relation to the building and also country. But then as you approach it, the closer you get to the shells, the larger it's going to become and there's going to be this real, I don't know, awe-inspiring experience, I think. Oh, it's so close now and actually we're ahead of um, schedule really because we've got the poles here so all of the pieces are here now. We've had about two metres of progress on the hidden midden under the stairs. And we're ready to kind of connect with the building and start telling the story and start surprising a lot of people. Really, I'm really excited. I hope that this kind of just blows everyone away and reminds them to, to love country, to respect country, to understand deep time. Um, and to, to, to change that uh, extractive logic and possessive logic over place, you know? We need to really start moving away from that relationship and actually become um, more connected to our ways of understanding kinship, connection, country. Mm -hmm.